I think 40 years on from Tracy, Darwin's had an opportunity of uh, rebuilding itself, both uh, uh, architecturally, but also uh, socially and culturally, where Darwin's had uh, the unfortunate opportunity of uh, rebuilding itself twice, twice both, both uh, with the bombing of Darwin, but also Cyclone Tracy. And I think it's important to commemorate it. I mean, let's not forget 66 people uh, lost their lives in Cyclone Tracy. And, uh, for those families and friends, there's obviously a lot of pain and suffering around. So of course you can understand why people don't want to celebrate Cyclone Tracy, but I think it's important that we commemorate and have it in the back of our minds, the trial and adversity and tragedy that's occurred uh, in our landscape locally uh, in Darwin, uh, in the top end, uh, so that we can take learnings from that, because it does become a part of the history of the nation, the history of the top end. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's important that that's passed on. It's important for our kids to learn about that. Because if we don't acknowledge it, um, be aware of it and learn from it, it's very hard to adapt in the future. But we're also mindful that you know, it's not a celebration uh, of 40 years anniversary, but it's a commemoration. Uh, because there is, has been a lot of pain and suffering. But at the same time, we now have this uh, fantastic landscape in this beautiful city that we call Darwin uh, as a result of the rebuilding efforts of those 10 to 30,000 people who uh, undertook the rebuilding of Darwin. There are certainly sections of the uh, survivors of Cyclone Tracy who do not want to talk about the event, who do not want to engage in any sort of um, commemoration or, or marking of the event. They just wish it wasn't, it hadn't happened. Uh, and uh, we can recognise that and that's why there's such a wide range of events that are happening so that people can choose to actually commemorate the event in the way that they want to. And, or they can choose to opt out and not do any of it. I went back uh, about three weeks later for the Board of Inquiry and on arrival in Darwin, the silence was almost deafening to, to coin a phrase. Um, apart from the devastation, no leaves on trees, no noise, no wildlife. And that was, once the cars passed, it was just very silent. Um, you won't see green ants for at least five or six years again. And yeah, that's one of the things we noticed pretty much is that you know, it took a long, long time for the green ants to come back to Darwin. I suppose the positive thing was um, people really bonded together, really got that community spirit, everybody helped each other. And also around Australia there was a lot of um, people that donated a lot of things. People opened their homes to a lot of families. Um, when we went, I went down to Adelaide for a couple of months after the cyclone and people if they heard you were from Darwin and went through the cyclone, they were really happy to give you clothes and things and help you out. So I think that was a really positive thing, um, was the goodwill and um, support from people all around Australia. Yeah, well, uh, when they was calling for volunteers to go around and put driving uh, on the clean-up and that, well, I'm a plant operator, so I thought, oh, well, I'll front up and uh, get a job on a loader somewhere or a truck or something to start cleaning up the place because I didn't want to leave here because I had a block down at Howard Springs and uh, you know a bit of gear laying around the place and uh, anyhow I went in to, uh, to sign up for a, uh, to get a start on, on the clean up and a mate of mine was with me he had his left arm in plaster, I had my right arm in plaster and they took one look at us and they said you get on the next plane and get out I said, well, no, I'm not going anywhere. So uh, I walked out the old F100 out there, and toolbox and back, and I got out the hacksaw and I said to Mickey, I said, here, cut this bloody plaster off my arm. So I hack, I sawed through it and threw the plaster away. I said, give his arm here. So I got the hacksaw and cut the plaster off his arm. So, of course, we got no plaster on, so I walked in the office next door. And, uh, said, oh, we want to sign up. Yeah, no worries, you know, start here. So I think we started next morning. <laughs>